Mark, thanks very much for joining us. We did want to do this in the setting that we've been at in the, at the Paul Roos Gymnasium this week, but unfortunately the wind um, didn't allow that. But that doesn't take away from the beautiful weather we've had um, over the course of the first few days here in Stellenbosch. Um, just sum up uh, what's been happening in the first uh, four or so days and how you feel that that's benefited the team so far. Yeah, probably not a bad place to start um, is the weather. It's been extremely pleasant here. Um, you wake up in the mornings and uh, the sky is blue and the sun breaks through. Nice tingling of the sun. As the day works its way through, um, you can feel it getting warmer and warmer, but not too hot in my opinion. But really good atmosphere to get um, get our work done. And it's been uh, amazing so far. And you've been officially in post for a couple of weeks now. I think you started on the 1st of March. How does it feel being back at the club this, that you hold so close to your heart? Um, yeah, and what, what, what are kind of your emotions being back in the role? Yeah, so it's been great to be back. I mean, I, I went through a kind of rigorous process for a reason because I felt as I was ready to make an impact uh, back at the club um, after a couple of uh, turbulent years, so to speak. Um, but I do know a lot of the players here already. I've had uh, previous... Uh, connections with them. Uh, I've seen them play. I've watched a lot of them play. I know they're a group of fantastic cricketers. So it really was a kind of no-brainer. Um, and when I was offered the role, I was I was over the moon. It was fantastic. And we've been over uh, in South Africa uh, for a few days now. Ten days in total. We're going to be here on pre-season tour. Um, how important are trips like this before the start of the season for the players to have some warm weather training, train on grass? I'm speaking to a lot of the lads, they really feel like they're benefiting from it. Um, just give us your thoughts on yeah. kind of how important it is to be in a place like this before the start of the season. Yeah, so a pre-season tour really is important to the club and to the players for, for a number of reasons. It's probably two or threefold really. Uh, firstly, for the players, it's important for them um, to get outside um, put their boots on uh, and go through their skill sets um, out in the middle. Um, net practice can probably get you so far, but it's, it's important that you can get out in the middle to express and to um, you know watch yourself execute the skills you've been practicing most of the winter. Um, so that's a, a key moment. Uh, another key moment really as a group Obviously, uh, particularly with a new head coach, we need to um, put our style of play into practice. Um, so that takes a bit of discussion. Um, players understanding their roles, being really clear on what's expected of them over the season. You can cover a lot of ground in 10 days when you're kind of living and breathing cricket uh, in, a, in a centre like this. And this centre here has been amazing. The rooms are nice and comfortable great training facility, we've, we've been fed well and um, I think the players have really enjoyed not just being here but on their downtime, being able to grab a, a nice cup of coffee or a, a vanilla frappe or whatever they have, I don't, I don't know, but I think all round uh, it's been a good place to have our 10 days pre-season. Uh and we started off with a few um, sessions in the nets before having a bit of middle practice. And then today on the Sunday, we've had back-to-back -back T20s. Uh, we had a game against Ga the Gary Kirsten Academy this morning, which we won by 66 runs. And then we had one this afternoon against Bowling Cricket, which uh, we won by eight wickets. Just talk to us a little bit about uh, how you felt those games today went uh, and how important that will be going into what we want to be a successful T uh, T20 Vitality Blast campaign this year. Yeah, so today was uh, a bit of a test probably for us as a coaching group because trying to get the challenge right for the players is is a bit tricky. Um, you want to play teams that are going to put you on a bit of pressure and um, make it tougher for you to execute your skills. And um, we had Gary Kirsten in the academy first up um, on a good pitch. Uh, I thought we batted particularly well. Um, really good partnership between Graham, um, between Ben Charlesworth, Graham's dad, <laughs> and um, um, once they got going, um, I really enjoyed the tempo of the innings. They showed a lot of stuff they've been working on in the nets. You know, turn the strike over regularly, had boundary options up their sleeves, and they showed a real appetite for the game, which is exactly what we want. 
got us up to 190 uh, reasonably comfortably and um, I expected us to defend that and uh, the bowlers went out there and, and did their bit you know bowl with aggression the seamers uh, mainly the young seamers in this game and uh, the spin uh, was a great support to them as well so yeah 66 run win um, it wasn't flattery I think we deserved to, to win by that margin and then the second game with the eight wickets against Boland where we saw um, we saw Boland managed to get 133 I think in their 20 overs so the bowlers managed to restrict them quite well before we chased it down quite convincingly in the end with a few of the batters getting a few decent scores. Yeah so on paper the second game um, was a more senior team if you like um, you know, expecting Boland to be probably the stronger of the two oppositions in, in essence they're uh, probably similar to, to the Kirsten Academy in terms of where they were at with the T20 we bowled first in this particular game and um, used a lot of spin in the power play and Seamus started well, Shaw and Zumat. I think after the first 10 overs, uh, I thought they did really well really to get up to 133. But there was never a point I thought that we, that score would challenge us. So um, what we thought, we would challenge ourselves to get it in a certain amount of overs and even so we came well within. With Miles Hammond, especially playing really well, Chris Dent goes off to a flyer, and then Ollie Price came in and finishing it off. So the things that happened today were, were really good, but kind of things that I expected to happen. So I'm um, looking forward to when the challenges uh, get a bit greater. Looking forward to other players getting a bit more part to play in the, in the, in the team, um, uh, particularly as we go into the, the red ball part of the preparation. And moving, moving away from the tour now into sort of the start of the season, you'll have some idea as to your kind of expectations and what you hope to achieve uh, this year. Can you just talk to us a little bit about those expectations um, across all the three of the formats? Yeah, uh, expectations are a crazy thing. You, you get a lot of coaches trying to lower expectations. So I think the main point of that is to, to make sure you, you kind of hit them or go beyond. But... Um, I think my main role here at the moment is to re really raise the expectations of the team. One, uh, mainly because I, I know the players are good enough to cope with that, that, you know, that raised aspiration. And two, I think maybe at times our bar work was too low. And if you're not careful, I think players can start playing to expectation. So I think it was important to challenge them a little bit more. Uh, with that in mind, you know, with the three comps, um, the four-day comp, I think we should be expected to get promoted. I think we're good enough to finish in the top two of eight in our division, uh, which is all it would take. So we've been going through ways and means how best to go about achieving this. Um, a tougher challenge would be the T20 Blast, uh, mainly because there are nine teams in there. Um, uh, nine, nine quality teams, four of whom already reached the, the the last four last year. So that kind of tells you the strength of the group. Uh, so that's going to be a, a bigger challenge. But having said that, I think we're better equipped uh, than last year maybe to cope with those challenges. Um, with the group we've got here, plus the addition of, of Bancroft and, and Webster, and we've got uh, so Goha where we need him as well. Um, we've got a really good group, lots of options, um, so it's going to be an exciting ride, I think, the T20 Plus. So our first county championship uh, is a way to Derbyshire beginning on the 5th of April. You just touched on kind of expectations there. Do you have an idea about what your kind of starting 11 might be going into that, or is there still lots of places up for grabs, or is it still a lot to do with the, the conditions on the day where we, we change horses for courses? What, what are your kind of thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, nice question. Um, I, I have 20 starting 11s. Um, every night before I go to bed, I can't help it. I write teams down, I look up, because the dynamic of the team is really important to me as well, uh, which is something we talked about in our presentation a couple of days ago. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm constantly looking at the options that are available with me, for me, I should say. And I guess the answer is one of those 20 options would be the answer. Um, but I'm not kind of prepared to share that at this stage. Not 
because it's a massive secret, but maybe, maybe I don't absolutely know for sure just yet. Uh, the seam bowling attack, I think we've got 10 seamers that you could possibly pick from this season. What are your thoughts on uh, bowlers sort of managing their workload? Do you, do you adopt more of a rotation policy or do you have a policy where if a seamer takes five wickets in a game, he's going to continue playing? What are your kind of thoughts on, on the bowling unit? Yeah, um, what happens? I, I think when you come into a club or when you return to a club, you look at areas that maybe weren't working as well previously. And there's no doubt that um, maybe our bowlers haven't been as robust as they, they could be over the few seasons. So availability for selection has been limited at times. That's something I really want to address to make sure that I've got a full pack to choose from more often than not. Um, I realise that injury and a bit of wear and tear is part and parcel. But if we can do anything to make sure we give these guys the best chance of playing at full intensity when they're selected, uh, that's what we're looking at. Um, so that may include uh, some rotation uh, for sure. But like you said, um, we have 10 to 11 options, eight of which have played a lot of first class cricket already. So any combination of those, I think we can be a real potent force. You have mentioned him already, but we've added Cam Cameron Bancroft to the squad. He's not here on tour with us at the moment, but he will be joining us for, across the whole season. Um, with, with the addition of Bancroft, how do you think that leaves um, our batting unit this season across all formats? Well, yeah, you've got a, an international player there um, for the number one test team in the, in the world. Um, he's that close to, to being their starting batter. He's had a fantastic Shield season. Uh, probably as we speak, he's preparing for a Shield final against Tasmania. So um, I've spoken to him a couple of times. He's really keen on getting back over and impacting the side. He sounds a really cool guy. Um, didn't talk a lot about himself. Just really keen on, on helping us to, to achieve what we want to as a group, which is, uh, as a coach, is kind of music to my ears, really. Of course, he'll have his own agenda. I think he's still he's not giving up on international cricket, and I think uh, a stellar season with us to back up the Australian one will put him right back in the mix. So he'll have some personal ambition that he's chasing, but he, he made it really clear that uh, his focus is trying to help Gloucestershire out and get back to the top. And the rest of the, the, the batting unit, your Ollie Prices, Chris Dent, Ben Charlesworth, James Bracey, he's got guys like that. Um, how do you feel like they're shaping up for the season? Are, are you hoping to them to all have a successful season in the in the yellow and black? Yeah, no, it's I mean you, you reel the names off and you realise how how good a group you've got. Um, I guess like any coach, you love it and you dread it at the same time because not all of them can play at the same same time. Um, but I look forward to some guys really getting stuck in that, grabbing the season, you know, by, by the neck and, and really becoming prolific uh, championship and, and short form players because the ability is there without a doubt. And uh, we're hoping that the influence of maybe another international player in the ranks will help uh, feed into that a bit. You touched on it briefly a little bit earlier, but the Vitality Blast campaign starts at the City Unique Stadium on May the 30th against Essex. Um, during your last stint as Gloucestershire head coach, you took us all the way to the 2020 Cup final in 2007. Um, how do you think your experience in that season with Gloucestershire will help uh, the current crop of players um, in, a, in our T20 campaign this year? Um, well, uh, you don't know exactly, is the truth. Um, what happens in, in the game, not just cricket, um, the sport keeps evolving. I think the advantage I've got, I've remained within the, the elite part of the sport for a while. Uh, I've seen it evolve, I've moved with it. My experience is greater than it was in, in 2007, so I feel I'm in a better place to make a, a better hash of uh, getting ourselves through to the um, certainly to the latter stages of the comp and then you see what happens. Um, the guys don't really need to be leaning on, on my experience in this case. Um, they're highly skilled in, in their own departments. Um, my job is to make sure that I can get them to execute 
even in the toughest of matches, the biggest of crowds. Um, that's that's where the the kind of money lies, really, in a lot of ways. Um, because the ability is there, it's just can we turn it on exactly when we need it? And that's where I step in. I've got to make sure the group are ready to go every time. And your brand, your style of cricket that you want to implement, not only on this tour, but across the whole season. Just talk to us a little bit about what, what that is to you. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we talked about this. It, it's something that you don't really want to put out there too much, okay. but it definitely is playing the game on the front foot. I really don't know how to play anywhere else, any any you know, any way else. And the players respond to that quite nicely. Uh, we're talking about increasing their scoring efficiency over four day cricket with a view to creating more overs for us to bowl teams out. So everything we look to implement is really to make sure we have a chance of winning that game. Um, and that's what we're really looking at. Um, so the style really is based around uh, enjoyment I want guys to wake up in the morning and can't wait to be at the cricket ground and sticking that, sticking that, as you said, the yellow and black training kit on, getting prepped for another Gloucestershire game and hopefully another Gloucestershire win. Uh, and I think one of the reasons why the Gloucestershire members and supporters hold you in such high regard is because of your success in uh, as captain and player um, during the glorious years in the 90s and the early noughties. Um, with your motivations and kind of mindset completely focused in the present, do you think that any of that uh, success that you've had in the past with the club will be able to um, rub off on the current couple of players we've got? Are you hoping it is anyway? Well, yeah, you hope so, but um, in a way you, you have to ask them. I, I've never been great at looking back, to be honest, and in a crazy way I thought part of our success was the fact that we, we never look back. You know, if you win one year, you don't kind of dine out on that year. You think, right, what's the next project? What can we do next? How can we get better? So I've always, that's always stuck with me. So coming into the club now, the last thing I want to do is, is look back a number of years and see and kind of dine out on that really. It's all about right here, right now and the next bit. So that's what I'll be encouraging the players to do. They've got their own um, legacy to leave and they can start working on that right now. Thanks Mark and we've got six days left or so in Stellenbosch. We've got a day off tomorrow. Have you got any, any plans of what you want to do with that day off? Do you know what you're doing? I, I have got plans and it, <laughs> it's not that sexy I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> it's a very admin base. Um, really important that we um, get the player appraisals done before the end of March. So um, I'll be setting that up and uh, hopefully trying to get that out of the way before we get into the, the real nitty gritty of the season. Well, all the best with, with those appraisals. Um, Mark, th thanks very much for joining us and all the best for the season and for the rest of the tour. Thank you. Yeah, many thanks. Cheers.